हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू लेसन टू दिस इज़ द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ लेसन टू एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन दिस लेसन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द जॉब क्रिएशन विच इज़ अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्टिविटी इन अ डेवलपिंग इकोनॉमी लाइक इंडिया वॉट आर द वेरियस चैलेंजेस फॉर जॉब क्रिएशन एंड वॉट आर द प्रोबेबल सोल्यूशंस दैट ऑल्सो वी हैव सीन I hope you have watched the first video of this lesson. If you haven't, please go to the playlist and you can watch it. Then you can come back here. Let us study employment scenario in India now. So we will have a little bit of historical overview in this video as to how employment scenario changed in our country right from the independence time. Okay, so in one line, if we want to summarize. Uh, the historical overview of employment scenario in india then we can say that there has been a transition from agriculture dominated employment to service sector dominated growth in our country so i had also told this to you in the previous video that india has followed an idiosyncratic growth path in which we have moved directly from agricultural dominated to service dominated economy and we have skipped the industry which is the secondary sector of the economy we have skipped this and we have directly gone to the service sector domination so this is what also gets reflected in the employment scenario as well let us see the historical overview now so the first point in the historical overview uh we can say that it is basically about the agricultural foundation so right from our independence till 1970s approximately 25 30 years india has been an agricultural dominated economy so our initial dependency on agriculture during independence india was primarily an agrarian economy nearly 70% of the workforce was employed in agriculture okay you know that during the british rule the british rule had led to lot of um, you know problems in the indian economy especially with the cottage industries with the handloom industries with the textile industries in our country so industrial revolution in england in europe that happened it led to downfall of this industries in our country over a period of 200 300 years and when british left india they left india in a very very uh, you know measly condition and uh, most of our people were illiterate were living in rural areas uh, were suffering from poverty and there was very high dependence on agriculture so almost 70% of the people were engaged in agriculture at the time of independence so we focused on food security after independence because starvation poverty was one of the reasons so there was a focus on food security in the first uh, you know for second and a few more five year plans that we undertook that we are going to see later in the uh, in, in the later part of the series about the various five year plans of the planning commission the green revolution is a very famous um you know one of the missions of the government of india which happened in 1960s it increased the food security and food productivity and reduced dependence of on food imports so first we had to focus on making ourselves self dependent when it comes to food security so the green revolution was a major step in that direction but rural incomes didn't rise proportionally limiting growth in the economy so agricultural productivity grew uh, our food production grew we became uh, you know self sufficient when it came to food production because of green revolution to a great extent but the incomes of farmers did not rise that much and that was the reason why people could not come out of poverty um uh, in true sense so there was a limited growth in the economy as well then the second phase that we are going to see is industrial growth without job expansion so although the industrial growth happened in our country after independence 
mostly during the 1980s and 1990s when you know during 1980s there were early reforms okay done by indira gandhi government and then later on in 1990s as you know there were a lot of economic and financial reforms in our country so during this time the focus was on to grow our industries to uh, to grow our manufacturing sector however our industries grew but the jobs did not get created so without job expansion industrial growth happened so that's why it, it was a kind of jobless growth okay jobless growth was witnessed during this period manufacturing uh, sector saw some growth especially after the early reforms of 1980s and post liberalization of 1991 but it never became a significant employer okay so it was never a significant employer in our economy and india's industrial growth was capital intensive and not labor intensive so the investment uh in the industrial sector was mostly into the capital intensive industries where there was more investment in machineries more automation and less of the labor intensive industries india struggled to replicate the labor intensive manufacturing success of china and south korea okay so we could not replicate their uh labor intensive manufacturing success of these countries we couldn't absorb india's agricultural workforce into factories so uh instead of absorbing agricultural workers into factories we saw very limited industrial job creation so this is one of the characteristics that all of you need to know i'm not going into much details here because we i don't want to waste your time on things that are not important for this examination so you should just know the brief overview okay now the next point that we would like to discuss is about the liberalization and service sector boom so how service sector uh, grew rapidly in our country after 1991 reforms which included liberalization we are going to see these reforms in detail later on uh, but all of you know that in 1991 lpg reforms came so where l means liberalization p means privatization and g means globalization so after these reforms our indian economy kind of opened up to foreign investments it deregulated a lot of sectors a uh, lot of licensing requirements were given away with uh, privatization happened and because of which there was a boost to the economy mostly the service sectors grew industries also grew but there was a jobless kind of growth investment was mostly in uh, uh, capital intensive sectors so lpg uh, which was the reforms of 1991 it opened up economy for foreign investments uh, removed trade barriers and deregulated key sectors which were conducive conducive to uh, services sector growth okay so there were there was lot of sectors which were deregulated for example foreign direct investments uh, were allowed now uh we were opened up for a lot of uh, services like it services okay then business process outsourcing bpo uh, which gave boom to our services sector the 1990s saw india become a global hub for information technology it and business process outsourcing which i already told you right the services sector grew rapidly it uh, which contributed more to gdp than agriculture and manufacturing urbanization also picked up as service sector grew so urbanization picked up uh, and there was a rise in knowledge based economy okay knowledge based economy meaning uh, you know meaning getting employment in services which employ highly skilled highly skilled or knowledge knowledgeable people okay so for example it professionals so knowledge based economy in urban areas they started employing a large number of educated indians so this was what the scenario that happened in our country so we missed the um, creation of jobs in manufacturing sector so see friends i'm again and again emphasizing on this point so that it it gets uh, you know uh, it gets into your mind uh, uh, and if you remember it uh, when you're writing this exam 
we have to just remember what what was the basic uh, you know uh, uh, situation of the economy right from 1947 till date so that's why I, I am repeating again and again this thing so that um, uh, you know you you get very well versed with 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 what exactly happened uh, although although in a brief manner so now let us look at the fourth point basically how service sector then became the driver of growth and it continued to be the driver of growth till today so by 2000s services accounted for 50 percent of india's gdp okay almost 50 percent of india's gdp came from services and employed more than 30 percent of our workforce okay so it was a significant share sectors like information technology telecommunications financial services healthcare tourism etc saw exponential growth so we saw growth in these sectors which led to service sector led growth in our in our country however there was a mismatched employment structure okay even though the service sector employed uh, was was contributing almost 50 percent to our gdp it it employed only about 30 percent of people and agriculture was still the major employer so agriculture uh, continued to employ a significant portion of population particularly in rural areas creating a mismatch between employment and economic output so um, you know despite uh, growing contribution of service sector to the economy uh, agriculture remained a dominant sector when it came to employment and especially in rural areas so as we told that service sector was mostly concentrated in urban areas only urban or mostly semi urban areas it could not reach the rural area now what were the challenges of this transition what were the different challenges first one was the rural urban divide as we have seen that the urban areas grew rural areas could not grow so there was a regional disparity okay between rural and urban areas and also among the states so some of the states they grew very rapidly some of the states could not pick up the growth of service sector primarily benefited the urban population leading to rising inequality between urban and rural areas so inequality between urban and rural areas increased then informal sector so low wages low job security especially in service like retail and logistics so service sector was mostly into informal sector like retail logistics logistics meaning the jobs of driver or cleaner this this kind of things retail so this was mostly informal sector employment so what are the characteristics of employment sector that there are low wages job security is not there or it is very low there is no social security so informal sector still contributes almost 90 percent of our economy so that is one of the challenges to our transition right then there was a uh, uh, you know agricultural dependence it continues as we have seen so despite increasing sh uh, despite decreasing share of agriculture in gdp large portion of population still depends on agriculture for its livelihood which led to rural distress and underemployment in agricultural agriculture remain issues so these remain issues despite the growth in service sectors now what are the current scenarios and future directions the current scenario is that there is a shift to high skilled services okay india's growth story is now increasingly linked to high skilled services particularly in it consulting finance and education so these sectors which require high skilled people so now our growth story is is getting linked to this sector so now we are depending more on these sectors for our employment okay then opportunities in digital india the rise of digital economy fintech e-commerce and startups new employment opportunities in both rural and urban areas but challenges in skilling and infrastructure persist so um, although we have brought digital india uh, which has brought internet and computers to the rural areas also which has led to some employment in those areas which included digital economy or e-commerce so people in rural areas now they start ordering online uh, they start investing also uh, they use uh, upi for making payments so there is a push for digital india and people have also by and large accepted it but as you know that in order to get a meaningful employment in these sectors we need to have skills and infrastructure also so this problem still persists 
and manufacturing push with make in India and PLI kind of schemes. So now in the current scenario, since we know that we have experienced a jobless manufacturing growth kind of, so we need to have manufacturing push in order to create more jobs in the manufacturing sector because ultimately manufacturing is a sector which has the potential to create maximum number of jobs, especially MSME sectors. Okay, so there is a renewed push to develop labor intensive manufacturing through various initiatives like Make in India, PLI, which is production linked incentive. Uh, we are we are going to see this reforms towards MSMEs. Okay, so MSME needs to be reformed because MSME is one area where, um, uh, you know, lot of employment potential is there. So uh, which can absorb a large chunk of the workforce, Indian workforce. So uh, in conclusion, India's transition from an agriculture dominated to service sector led growth has been driven by liberalization, urbanization and technological advancement. Okay, so these are the three, uh, three things which has led to this transition. Uh, however, it has left behind structural issues such as imbalance between rural and urban areas. Okay, so there is a rural and urban divide here. Uh, underemployment in agriculture. So in agriculture, uh, there has been an underemployment, uh, which has led to rural distress, and also informal sector. So these are some of the characteristics. So I'm just concluding for you. So again, I'll repeat. So from agriculture to service dominated, we have transition, which has been led by which has been driven by liberalization, urbanization, technological advancements. However, there has been rural and urban divide, underemployment in agriculture and informal sector dominance. Okay, in service sector, especially. So this is in service sector. To ensure inclusive growth. Okay, so inclusive growth, meaning the growth which supports everybody, in which everybody is participant. So to ensure this kind of growth, India will need to focus on skilling, skilling its people, balancing the employment across various sectors like agriculture, manufacturing and services. So we need to ensure this and also provide sufficient infrastructure in rural and semi urban areas. So I hope you have understood the historical overview now of the employment scenario. We are going to continue in the next video. Thank you.